Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. So we have a huge Tesla news day today, a lot of exciting stuff. Real quick, I know some of you asked about my t-shirts. This is a Van Heusen tee, if that's how you pronounce it. I got you. And real quick, some breaking news. Unfortunately, now the Tokyo Olympics will have no spectators because of COVID. Japan's only 15% fully vaccinated and they're going back into a state of emergency. So this is a major bummer. I, some of you guys know, am very excited for the Olympics. Not having the crowd and the energy in the stands definitely sucks, but hey, I guess it is what it is and there's nothing anybody can do. But let's get into some Tesla stuff. So breaking, the CPCA said Tesla sold 28,138 vehicles in China and exported another 5,017 in June for about 33,000. And just real quick, this data was also confirmed by Kelvin Yang on Twitter. So if we come to our handy dandy Tesla China sales chart, you can see the June figures, 33,155 for the month just short of May and also just short of March. But guys, these numbers are gonna be up and down month to month, not a big deal. As long as everything is slowly in line and over time trending upward, that's exactly what we want to see. We don't have the Model 3 and Model Y breakdown just yet, but once we get it, I will be sure to add it. And ordinarily, the third month of the quarter, Tesla does not actually have any exports, but as you can see, they did in this case, so that's something to keep an eye on going forward. So overall, these numbers are very good. I think Troy Tesla and Gary Black were both in the neighborhood of 30,000, so this would be a beat if you wanted to call it that, but all is well here. And the numbers for quarter three in China are set to get a potential boost because as you see, Tesla China is now taking orders for the Model Y standard range, which sadly we don't even have here in the States yet, hopefully eventually. The price is gonna be about 42,600 US dollars. Deliveries are expected to start in August and the range is 525 kilometers, which is about 326 miles, but this is on the GB cycle, not the EPA cycle. So in the real world, that figure will obviously probably be under 300 miles. If any of you have a rough conversion of what the 326 miles on the GB cycle would be on the EPA, let me know below. But either way, this is an awesome price point. Many of the younger buyers in China were wanting a price point just like this one. And the reason that Tesla can offer such a low price is because of this EV incentive that can be applied to vehicles with a starting price under 300,000 yuan, which the standard range Model Y will be under. And one more rumor for this offering, it will most likely feature the LFP batteries from CATL, which I have been talking about a lot over the past few weeks, and Ray for Tesla is expecting a hot quarter three for Tesla in China. I thought this was pretty cool. Sawyer said there was a Tesla ad up for an hour in Times Square in New York today, and no, Tesla did not pay for it. Somebody else did, and he said it looked pretty cool on the big screen, by the way. So just yet another reason why Tesla doesn't have to advertise, because apparently someone else is paying for Tesla ads in New York City, which is awesome. Tesla China posted a new video with some new B-roll that we haven't seen before, so I'm gonna play it for you guys real quick. All right, so here we go with the FSD Beta 9 and what's going on. Now, just recently somebody tweeted an older video as you can see, to which Elon responded, an old video. Ah, those were simpler times. So clearly this transition to vision only and 4D and everything that they are working on is definitely a really hard problem, hence the delays over and over. 
New scientist tweeted AI generated tongue could make game characters look more realistic and Elon replies, finally some tongue. <laughs> this dude. But here it is, Elon tweeted very early this morning, Beta 9 will start uploading at midnight California time on Friday. Bear in mind, it is still just a beta. Now this is odd because Elon is throwing cold water on a new feature when he is typically hyping it up for how awesome it will be, so tempering expectations. And then after this tweet, everybody kind of went bananas, being super excited that everybody was going to get access to beta 9, but then we have this. Then Jeff asked about the ETA for the FSD beta download button for the general public, which would be the actual wider release to give it to more people than just the few thousand or so testers that are using it now. To which Elon said, depends on how the limited beta goes. If it goes well, maybe a month or so. So then now it's not even two weeks, we're up to a month, which could really mean anywhere from three to six months to 12 months, we don't really know. But sadly, I hate to report that this V9 that will be coming, we think tomorrow, Friday, not next week, Friday, will only be for the limited or early access program. It is not the wide release. It is not the download button. So that is a major buzzkill. I am sorry for that, but the wait continues. And guys, just remember, some of the best things in life are worth waiting for. I understand everyone's frustration, especially those that have paid thousands of dollars years ago and still don't have any access to the FSD beta. But right now, this is just where we're at and it is what it is. And also we talked about the new user interface a few days ago and Elon said, we're only going to get an improved FSD screen for now, attempting to show the mind of the car, which is exactly what I said, that part on the left where you get the FSD visualization, that's where we should see the new user interface not the full like version 11 user interface, not yet at least. And Ethan was giving some praise to the vision performance and Elon responded, expect rapid improvement with pure vision. So to sum it up, we believe tomorrow night at midnight California time, version nine will start downloading to the early access program testers. The wide release for the general public version nine will be at least another month and most likely probably longer. I personally would expect it sometime in the fall or winter this year, probably best case scenario sadly, but we should get that new user interface for the FSD visualizations and then hopefully the 11 once again toward the end of this year or early 2022. And to sum it up with an image, I know that this is how many of you are feeling and this is comical, although some of you probably aren't laughing, but <laughs> hey, I thought this was pretty good. So moving on back in April, Tesla gave some criticism to the German government with slowing things down for everything they were doing at Giga Berlin. And since then, apparently, unless this is virtue signaling, then maybe the German government is actually going to implement some changes due to that criticism that Tesla shared. So at the end of last month, the council proposed seven steps to speed up the process, including mandatory conservation, species standardization, faster litigation, using project managers, and all of this should help with bottlenecks and licensing authority resources. And the committee wants the federal states to create pools of experts, and then the municipalities could have resources for help as necessary. So once again, we're just gonna have to wait and see if these changes actually impact the speed of Giga Berlin and other projects like this in the future, or if this is just nonsense political posturing. A quick weird article from Reuters, Germany to fine Tesla for illegal construction because Tesla constructed tanks on the territory for which it had no authorization authorization, the company was banned from using the tanks it had already built, and that's the end of the article. So thank you for that Reuters, we'll see what comes of that, nothing to worry about though. A quick note on a massive battery energy storage project, as you can see, 300 megawatts, 450 megawatt hours, the Victorian big battery has reached the halfway mark of construction. This one is more than twice the size of the Hornsdale Power Reserve battery, which was at one point the biggest battery in the world. This Victorian project is using the new three megawatt hour mega packs from Tesla. And this project will play a role in the system integrated protection scheme in Victoria, providing grid stability and security. And Lily D'Ambrosio shared some really cool B-roll footage of the construction, so I wanna play for you guys as well.
cool story here. We're going to get EV street chargers on light poles on the streets. And this is from a nonprofit in Kansas City, the Metropolitan Energy Center. So their plan is to add chargers to existing street light poles where they're easy to see and convenient to access. They already eliminated the sites where this would not work, like where a sidewalk runs between the light pole and the actual parking. And they plan to install up to 60 chargers in these sites by the end of the year. We need more of this, but this is very good to see nonetheless. And this is pretty awesome. A Tesla supercharger that is set up to look like a vintage gas pump. I thought this was really cool. This, by the way, is apparently in Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. And it looks like Elon is set to defend the Solar City acquisition in court next week on July 12th. This has been going on for years now. It was delayed because of COVID and the damages in the lawsuit could be between two and 2.6 billion. But of course, however this shakes out, the judge would have to do determine how to calculate specific damages. And as of now, it is really only Elon, the other board members kind of settled up and they are out of the picture. So we'll see how this plays out next week. And Fort Lauderdale accepted the proposal for Elon's Beach Tunnel, the Boring Company project. This doesn't mean they got the deal, but here's where we're at. Apparently it would cost about five to $8 per person, which is supposedly gonna be cheaper than Uber, but the costs to the city are not yet disclosed. And there are still other firms that have 45 days to submit competing proposals. This project would be called the Los Olas Loop, a reference to a local road that connects to the beach. So we'll have to wait and see what these other firms can come up with. And real quick, NEO's global expansion is underway. As you can see, NEO superchargers and battery swap stations are headed to Norway. The superchargers and home charging point should be available to Norwegians as early as September, but of course the battery swap stations will take a bit longer to implement, but this is a major milestone for NEO with that global expansion. And as you can see, they are hiring for a general manager of Neo Germany. This of course will be a very challenging move for them going from their home playing field into Germany, probably the second hardest right behind coming into America if they do that, but that's probably well into the future. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. I hope you guys have an awesome day and a big thank you to everybody on the next screen, especially those new patrons of you over the last few days who you are also down in the comment below. Thank you very much.